Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Now we're going to be looking at Venn diagrams. So you can get lots of different Venn diagram questions in the UK CAT, and we're going to be focusing on a few. One type is text to Venn. This is where they give you text and ask to choose which of the four Venns fit the information best. You will also get questions that are implicit. They don't explicitly ask you to draw a Venn, but drawing one will help you solve the problem. You have Euler diagrams. These are like Venn diagrams, but they give you real life categories and you have to use your own knowledge to pick up the right Venn. You can also get Venn to text, where they give you a Venn diagram and you have to choose the correct statement. And non-circular Venn diagrams, where they give you a Venn diagram made of non-circular shapes and you have to choose a correct statement. Let's start with text to Venn first. Here, they give you a text scenario. They ask you to choose the correct Venn diagram to fit the scenario. And you have to use the information step by step to find the correct Venn diagram. Which diagram best represents the information is a sort of statement you'll be given. This should be a clue that it is a text to Venn question. An example here. Hilary is making 16 cakes for her tea party. She is putting toppings on them. Sprinkles, Smarties and cookies. Seven contain sprinkles. Three contain all three toppings. Two contain two toppings. The same number of cakes has sprinkles only as those that have only cookies. Which diagram best represents the information? Pause the video here. So as I mentioned before, this question will require you to look at Venn diagrams and it might even be easier to draw your own Venn diagram here. But let's start by using the process of elimination. The first thing we are told is that, they, that she's making 16 cakes for her tea party. So we should check that they all add up to the correct number. If we look at A, it adds up to 16. If we look at C, it adds up to 16. If we look at D, it also adds up to 16. But B adds up to 19. That means we can rule that out. Now, the next thing to look at is the information with the most categories. There are three circles here, so anything that tells us about, uh, that, about all three circles is the most valuable information you're going to get. Let's split, split up the information into the three categories, two categories, and one category. In red, we have the, the three category information. In purple, we have the two category information. And in green, we have the one category information. So let's start with the piece of information in red, about three categories. We see three contain all three toppings. Now look at A, C and D and make sure all three have a middle, have three in the middle where all the circles inter intersect. Unfortunately for us, all three do have three in the middle. That means we have to carry on and look at the next clue. The next clue will be about two toppings. We see that two cakes contain two toppings. Unfortunately for that, for us, it doesn't help us here either, because we see that in between two circles, for A, there is a 2, for C, there is a 2, and for D, there is also a 2. We can also look at another piece of information that tells us about two categories. We are told the same number that have sprinkles as those that have cookies. That means at the centre of each circle, there should be two numbers that are the same. For A, we see that there are two 4s. For C, we see that there are two 4s. But for D, we do not see that, therefore we knock it out. Now the last piece of information about one category, 7 contains sprinkles. This means there has to be one enclosed region that adds up to 7. If we look at C, we see that, that there is no region that adds up to 7. But for A, there is. This means that A is the correct answer. Now it's time to look at type 2, implicit text to Venn. Here, they will give you a text scenario. They will ask you to choose the correct statement or answer to fit the cut scenario. You will have to draw a Venn diagram, even though they don't tell you to. If you try and answer these questions without drawing a Venn diagram, it will take you forever, and it will be inefficient and will cost you a lot of valuable time. An example, the local council were doing a survey of how many people have gadgets. They surveyed 100 people in total. Seven people have TVs, tablets and mobile phones. Eleven people have TVs and tablets. Eight people have tablets and mobiles. Twenty-six people have TVs and mobiles. Thirty-three people have TVs. Thirty-eight people have mobiles and twenty-seven people have tablets. How many people had neither tablets nor mobile phones? Have a go. Okay, now let's 
look at a step-by-step -step guide to this question. The first thing you need to understand is to draw a Venn diagram and to label all three circles. It's really easy to get into the trap of forgetting which one's which, so the first thing you should do, draw the three circles, label each of them straight away. Now, the principle applies that I mentioned before, always use the information that tells you about the most categories. Luckily for us, that's at the top. Seven people have TVs, tablets and mobile phones. This means we could put a seven in the middle. The next piece of information we should look at is information that tells us about two categories. It follows chronologically as it is just below the statement we've just looked at. Now, you cannot fall into the trap of just plugging the numbers into a Venn diagram. You can't just put an 11 there, an 8 there and a 26 there. Consider this. Of those 11 people that have TVs and tablets, 7 of them will also have a mobile phone. Therefore, it doesn't make sense to put 11 there because th that, that, does not, that does not include the people that have already been put in the middle of the Venn diagram. Now, so what you do is, you take away 11 from 7, which gives you 4, so that you know the number of people that have to go in that gap between tablets and TVs. Do the same between TVs and mobile phones and between tablets and mobile phones. You should end up with a Venn diagram that looks like this. Do you see how 4 plus 7 adds up to 11, 19 plus 7 adds up to 26, and 1 plus 7 adds up to 8? Now you put this information in. What's left? The information about one category. 33 people have TVs, 30 people have mobile phones, and 27 people have tab tablets. Just put them in, right? No. We already have people. We already have a 4, 7, and 19, a 4, 7, and 1, a 1, 7, and 19. These represent people that have those gadgets individually. For example, for tablets, the 4, 7, 1, which adds up to 12, those 12 people have a tablet. That's included in that 27 number. In that region, you have to put the people that have tablets only. So use the same principle as before and take away 4, 7 and 1 from 27, which should give you 15, and do the same for all three circles. You should get this. Now, you might think, oh, I can just add them all up and um, take away from 100 to find out the number of people that, have tab that, that didn't have tablets or mobile phones. But it's not as easy as that. We need to consider the fact that there are people that have no gadgets. So to work this out, we need to work out the number of people with at least one gadget. So if we add all the numbers up in this Venn diagram, it becomes 52. So you take away 100 from 52, meaning there are 48 people that have no gadget. So the next step many people fall short on we're working out the people that had neither tablets or mobile phones, okay? We need to think about the people that only had TVs because those who only had TVs did not have tablets and did not have mobile phones. That's two people. And we add that onto the people that had no gadgets and that gives us 48. Therefore, the people with neither tablets nor mobile phones is 50. Therefore, the answer is A, 50. Thank you for watching this free Medic Mind tutorial. For £30, you can unlock all 150 tutorials in our online course. The course covers four full days of UK CAT teaching, as well as a course to help you with your personal statement and interview. You're free to ask as many questions as you'd like to our teachers, and with each tutorial, you can read along using our five UK CAT ebooks covering 500 pages of theory and questions to guide you every step of the way.